Mike Tyson has jumped on Jake Paul's Rocky Balboa training with a scornful reaction. The former world heavyweight champion was unfazed and even concerned for Jake Paul as he took up his training to another level. In his response, he gave Jake Paul some laughable words of advice and gave him a final assurance that he was going to defeat him regardless of the intensity of his training sessions. Let's get right in. Jake! 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 Snap out of it. I, you should have called me Rocky. I would. <laughs> The whole of boxing began watching a series on March 7th and thought it has seemed like a never-ending one, it is more likely it would last only for a duration of about five months, as all eyes are set on July 20th to put an end to the long, drama-packed buildup of the Mike Tyson vs. Jake Paul fight at the Atten T Stadium, Arlington, Texas, which is the home of Dallas Cowboys. On numerous occasions, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul have been engaged in so much back and forth and heated exchange of words on social media. Every move of each fighter looks to be aimed at begging the better of the other. From training sessions, parties, outings and interviews to social media pictures and videos, both fighters have never missed any platform to diss themselves. Both fighters have severally called out each other in their training sessions, aiming at scaring each other off and each one boasting about his preparations. <laughs> To a large extent, Jake Paul was always the one to make the first move before getting punished by not only Iron Mike Tyson, but also by other professionals of the sport. Aside from the daily uploads of training sessions, which the baddest man on the planet started first, Jake Paul has been the one mainly at the heart of their controversies ever since the match was announced. In the announcement video, Jake Paul came up with countless footage of Prime Mike Tyson sending insults and even biting the ear of Evander Holyfield. The problem child has caused many problems and has gotten under intense scrutiny from boxing professionals and supporters regarding his conducts. His repeated references to Mike Tyson's earbite of Evander Holyfield has not only been deemed questionable, but has also brought him insults too. However, in his most recent post, he has taken a rather silent approach, and this time, it is Iron Mike Tyson who has come for Jake Paul unprovokedly. Now, well, some of your critics would say, you know, there's a race for mayor. We know you're a convicted rapist. This could hurt his campaign. How would you respond to that? Hey, um, I don't know who said that. You're the only one I heard say that. You know what I mean? In recent training footage, Jake Paul was seen doing quite unusual, Rocky Balboa-esque sessions. Nothing like the footage he had released over the past few weeks since the bout was announced. Rather than spar and train in the gym, Jake Paul was seen doing his training in an open space and in a car. With the vigor and intensity Jake Paul is putting into his sessions, he looks really set to give the baddest man on the planet a run for his money. Many have called it a lose-lose situation for him. However, he's keen on taking the loss that comes with a win. Definitely, Jake Paul would rather win the bout and get the trolls from boxing fans and professionals that he was bragging about defeating a 58-year-old. Be it an honorable win or a dishonorable one, a win remains a win. And a win with some hate is surely better than a loss against a 58-year-old who last graced the ring in a professional bout when Jake Paul was just eight years old. A loss against the baddest man on the planet would have far-reaching consequences on Jake Paul. It may be so defining that the single loss might shut out all of his dreams of being a world champion someday. And perhaps, if it doesn't get that bad, it may just take him off boxing for a long time and permanently cement him as a boxer who boxes no real fighters but is always on the lookout for old and retired boxers and mixed martial artists as many claim. To Jake Paul, thinking about the consequences of such defeat is in itself traumatic. And rather than go through such, he would prefer enduring some very intense and rigorous training sessions. In the training sessions, Jake Paul was seen in the public running up steps. He was also seen shadowboxing, also not in a gym, but on a rocky ground in open air. 
If you've ever questioned the need or significance for shadow boxing, then it is one of the most important aspects of boxing. Shadow boxing is a physical workout, primarily used by boxers to warm the body before a fight. It involves moving around by yourself and throwing punches in the air. All these gradually increase the heart rate of boxers and prepare their muscles for strenuous training or fight. He, however, didn't stop his shadow boxing in public. He also continued it with so much intensity while he was in the car. It was at this moment he made a shocking revelation that have more people insights into what he was really about. While in the car, he was so engrossed with his shadow boxing that he paid no attention when his name was being called repeatedly. Jake, 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 snap out of that, the other fellow with him called. After a third call, that was even more of a yell, he responded, saying, you should have called me Rocky, I would. It was at this moment that many discovered Jake Paul was trying to imitate Rocky Balboa. Evidently, Jake Paul had drawn inspiration from the American sports drama film, written, directed by, and starring Sylvester Stallone. He had not only used the background music of Rocky Balboa, he had also used the exact location of Balboa's famous running on step exercise, the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And Jake Paul has been keen on using his dynamic training techniques to get the better of the baddest man on the planet come July 20th. On seeing this, however, Mike Tyson gave a scornful remark at Jake Paul's new methods. In response to Jake Paul's imitation of Rocky Balboa's trainings, Mike Tyson wrote, Don't wear yourself out, my friend. Whether you sit at home or you run on the steps of Burj Khalifa, I'm going to knock you out. And don't forget to box meats and run with bricks, too. Tyson's response sounded friendly, but had so much sarcasm in them. Tyson seemed so bold of his abilities that he advised Jake Paul against a potential fatigue. To him, no action or training method of Jake Paul would give him a victory, even going as far as telling him to expect a defeat, even if he runs on the steps of Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, as tall as over 2,700 feet. If Jake Paul attempts such consistently, it's very likely he would need a replacement eventually, as that might do more harm than good. Also, Iron Mike Tyson also advised Jake Paul to run with bricks in his hand or box meats. Well, all of these were other training techniques used by Rocky Balboa in the popular movie. Perhaps you are unfamiliar with the story of the movie and who Rocky Balboa really was. We would do you the good of going into a brief detail of the movie, especially his training sessions, which Jake Paul has now chosen to deploy his preparations against Iron Mike Tyson. Rocky Balboa is a 2006 American sports drama film written, directed by, and starring Sylvester Stallone. It is the sequel to Rocky V, 1990, and the sixth installment in the Rocky film series. Development for a sixth Rocky film began after Stallone expressed regret of the outcome of Rocky V, which was viewed as a disappointing conclusion to the end of the franchise. Rocky Balboa includes references to characters and objects from previous installments, and Stallone was inspired by recent personal struggles and triumphs when writing the film. It also stars Burt Young and Antonio Tarver in his only acting role. Over the six series, the Rocky films feature a perennial underdog who always manages to find scrappy ways to beat the odds and always gives it all he's got. They never fail to light a fire in your belly. Though Rocky Balboa's character is known to be fictional, his training regimen provides real inspiration on tough, often creative ways to get fit and strong, no excuses exercises that frequently employ free or improvised equipment and could be incorporated into routines. The latest installment, Rocky V, was released in 2006, 20 years after the events of Rocky V. Rocky, now in his early 60s, has been going through changing times in his life. He runs a small but rather successful restaurant called Adrian's, named after his wife who died of ovarian cancer four years prior. Rocky is no longer depressed and broke and is doing far better than he was in years prior. Rocky visits Adrian's graveside regularly and each year on the anniversary of her death, takes a tour of the old places where their relationship began and blossomed, the now closed J&M Tropical Fish Pet Shop where Adrian worked, the former site of the ice skating rink where they had their first date, and Rocky's old apartment where they fell in love. Rocky's son, Robert Jr., is now working as a struggling mid-level corporate employee and has been farther apart from his family over the years, but reluctantly joins Rocky to commemorate the anniversaries of his mother's death. An episode of ESPN's program, Then and Now, airs featuring a computer simulated fight between Rocky and his prime and the current champion, Mason the Line Dixon. 
Antonio Tarver. The simulation result sees Rocky winning by knockout in the 13th round, which stirs up a discussion about the result if such a fight ever occurred. Inspired by the simulation and feeling he still has some issues to deal with stuff in the basement, Rocky decides to return to the ring and applies to renew his boxing license. Though Rocky passes the required physical with flying colors, the licensing committee denies his application, citing his advanced age and their moral duty to protect him from himself. Rocky responds to this with an impassioned speech of his own, and the committee change their minds to renew his license. The brain damage Rocky is diagnosed with within Rocky V is not addressed in this film, but in interviews, Stallone has said that the storyline explanation would have been that Rocky's brain damage was within the normal range for boxers. When tested for brain damage in Rocky V, Rocky was suffering the effects of a severe concussion as a result of the Drago fight, but he never sought a second or more informed opinion because he intended to retire anyway. Rocky's intentions were originally just to compete in small local fights, but with the publicity of Rocky's return right on the heels of the embarrassing computer simulation, Mason Dixon's promoters convinced Rocky to challenge the champ in an exhibition match at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Originally against fighting an aged Rocky, Dixon recognizes the opportunity to fight a legend and hopes to end all prognosticating about who would win, as well as contend that he has never had a truly great opponent or memorable match. In the media, commentators dismiss Rocky's chances and the merits of the fight, assuming that it will be one-sided due to Rocky's age, despite their original excitement with Rocky's return to the ring and their doubts regarding Dixon's ability. Before the fight, the boxing record that was presented for each boxer was, for Rocky, 81 bouts, which includes 57 wins, 23 losses, and a draw, with 54 knockout victories. For Dixon, 33 wins and no defeats, with 30 knockout victories. As news of the bout spreads, Robert begins to feel more pressure from being Rocky's son and makes an effort to discourage Rocky from fighting, blaming his own personal failings on his father's celebrity shadow, but Rocky rebukes him with some profound advice. To succeed in life, it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, and that blaming others won't help him. The day after this debate, father and son meet over Adrian's grave and reconcile, which is when Robert announces that he has resigned from his job to be at ringside. Rocky also reunites with his old trainer, Duke, and both men quickly realize that age and arthritis have sapped Rocky of any speed he once possessed. They decide to focus on one major remaining weapon, power. When the match begins, it appears to be as lopsided as everyone predicted, with Dixon's speed allowing him to dominate Rocky at will, knocking him down twice early on. However, the champion soon realizes that Rocky will not back down and that the elderly Rocky has bricks in his gloves. The tide turns when Dixon injures his hand while punching Rocky. This evens the playing field and allows Rocky to mount an offense, knocking Dixon down for the first time in the latter's career. During the subsequent rounds, Dixon's injury numbs up, which enables him to throw much harder punches and pose a threat to Rocky. In the final round, it starts out slow for both combatants. After a brief exchange of punches, Dixon catches Rocky with a strong blow, knocking down Rocky for the third time. As Rocky takes the knee, he looks to Robert in the corner and has flashbacks of his time with Adrian, remembering what she said to him about never giving up. As he slowly gets up, the crowd, along with Marie, starts to chant his name and he rises to Dixon's surprise. As the final 30 seconds unfold, Dixon manages to catch Rocky with quick punches. However, an emotional Rocky retaliates with devastating punches of his own. The two exchange punches, but Rocky gets the final blow before the bell rings. In the end, the two fighters go the distance and show their appreciation for each other. Before the winner is announced, Rocky and his entourage make their way out of the ring in celebration. As Dixon is announced the winner by split decision, Rocky thanks each and every one of his group, and with Robert and Polly by his side, they turn Rocky around and raise his arms as the audience gives him a heartfelt standing ovation. Dixon is finally recognized as being a warrior for fighting through every round, and Rocky proves to the world that he is no joke, mirroring the ending of the first film. After the fight, Rocky visits Adrian's grave and puts flowers on top, telling her, Yo, Adrian, we did it, which is a play on the second film's line, Yo, Adrian, I did it. Rocky is last seen walking away from the grave and waving goodbye one last time, 
When the last installment was produced, Rocky was old already and not much is seen in his training sessions, aside from the training done to improve his power. In the earlier installments produced even before Jake Paul was born, he was young and agile and could do more rigorous training exercises like the one Jake Paul is now practicing ahead of his bout against Mike Tyson. Cast iron, pile driving punches that will have to hurt so much they'll rattle his ancestors. Every time you hit him with a shot, it's gotta feel like he tried kissing the express train. The very first installment that was released in 1976 shows a training montage that sets the archetype for all others. Rocky Balboa is introduced as a kind-hearted blue-collar bloke who makes a living collecting debts for a loan shark on the mean streets of Philly. The small-time club fighter gets a chance to face off against heavyweight boxing world champion Apollo Creed. Rocky doesn't have the kind of training resources his opponent does and makes do with what he's got. He begins running through scrap yards and wailing on slabs of beef. Rocky's journey into fighting shape is accompanied by the greatest training montage song of all time, Gonna Fly Now, and culminates with one of the most famous scenes in cinema, a run up the steps of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, an exercise that was part of the real-life training routine of Joe Frazier. In Rocky II, the underdog protagonist gets a shot at a rematch with Apollo Creed and again trains in scrappy fashion, continuing to improvise his exercises. This time he copes with shouldering a log and chasing a chicken, while adding some weight work as well. Rocky also does an encore run that once more culminates atop the art museum steps, this time joined by a crowd of kids cheering on their hometown hero. In Rocky III, Balboa is no longer an underdog in the traditional sense, having successfully defended his title 10 times. As a result, he has garnered significant fame and wealth but when he learns that his manager handpicked lesser opponents for his fights and that he hasn't truly been squaring off against the best, he decides to take on a young, hungry, powerful contender, James Clubber Lang. Balboa's new challenge becomes sloughing off the softness he's accumulated from being on top and trying to find some of the old hunger himself. At first he fails, and his unfocused training regimen results in a loss to Lang, Balboa must then deal with not only the fallout of this failure, but the death of his manager. It turns out to be Rocky's former rival, Creed, who helps him to again find his fighter's heart. Creed trains Rocky with classic boxing exercises, while putting a new emphasis on speed, footwork and agility, and taking his runs off the urban pavement and onto the beach. Rocky IV, however, is a study in contrasts the individualistic democratic United States versus the communist Soviet Union, a kind-hearted boxer versus an unfeeling robot, and an old-school, back-to-nature training regimen versus a modern, high-tech one. While Rocky's opponent, Ivan Drago, uses all kinds of experimental gizmos and drugs to get in shape, Rocky sets up camp on a remote Russian homestead and goes full-on wild man, creatively utilizing what's at hand to get farmer strong. The stakes of the fight present a chance to symbolically establish national superiority and avenge Creed's death at Drago's hands. As a result, this episode calls forth the longest training montage in the series, an epic sequence that requires two parts to fully encapsulate. In Rocky V, Rocky is mentoring Apollo Creed's son, as the aging Balboa also comes out of retirement for one more fight. In his late 50s, he can't hope to compete against his younger opponent on quickness and agility and will instead have to rely on raw strength and power. As his trainer tells him, to beat this guy, you need speed, but you don't have it. And your knees can't take the pounding, so hard running is out. And you got arthritis in your neck, and you've got calcium deposits on most of your joints, so sparring is out. So, what we'll be calling on is good old-fashioned blunt force trauma, horsepower, heavy-duty cast-iron pile-driving punches that will have to hurt so much they'll rattle his ancestors. Every time you hit him with a shot, it's gotta feel like he tried kissing the express train. In order to build some hurt and bombs, Rocky really hits the weights hard and incorporates compound barbell lifts into his more traditional boxing exercises. Things come full circle as Gotta Fly Now, which went missing in Rocky IV Returns and Rocky once more ascends the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum. Any keen viewer would observe so many similarities between the movie and Jake Paul and Mike Tyson's case, as an old retired boxer makes a return to the ring against a younger one. And if we are to go completely by the storyline of the latest installment, then Jake Paul would have the victory, while Tyson has the honor. 
as Iron Mike Tyson has proven to not only have the weapon of power, but speed and agility. Little wonder why he came on live television to boldly claim he was faster than Jake Paul. Fans of Mike Tyson would hope his case takes a different twist from that of Rocky Balboa. And that's all for now. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button below. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.